Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Forgive me if I'm not on my A game today guys, I'm not feeling 100%, hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow after a good night's rest, but regardless, we're going to start off with a couple of things from Intel, the first of which is regarding Huawei. Huawei? Huawei? I'm not sure. Regardless. So, Intel has basically said, according to a report from CNBC, that it has continued to sell products to the company and also has applied for some licenses to actually sell more products. Now, of course, Huawei or Huawei, whatever, was reportedly blacklisted for posing a national security risk. And numerous companies did come to Huawei's defense and there's... These companies did argue that the consumer products didn't pose any national security threat, etc, etc. And that's why Intel have actually resumed sales to the company, according to the Intel CEO, Robert Swan. And he said, quote, For the most part, if you look at the lion's share of what we ship to, into China generally, but Huawei, who's a large customer of ours, it's a general purpose compute. It's a general purpose product that we ship to all other cloud service providers. So that general purpose compute, we don't believe, is what should be worrisome if the quest is to protect national security. So essentially, Intel believe that the parts they are selling to the company will not be using any products that could be a threat to national security. Moving on, however, we have a very interesting listing on wikichip.org for the Intel Puma Graph processor. So you will find the full wikichip link in the description. <coughs> Sorry, the full article linked in the description below this video. As I said. Not on my game today, guys, so do forgive me for any flubs. However, you will find it linked below, and it is regarding DARPA, ERI, Hive, and Intel Puma Graph Processor. So, the Hierarchical Identify, Verify, Exploit, or Hive program is an ongoing DARPA program that attempts to address shortcomings when it comes to graph algorithms. And Intel Puma is actually part of that. Intel is responsible for the hardware architecture section of Hive, and they have been hard at work addressing a sorry various issues with the Puma architecture. So there is a team inside Intel's data center group that have been hard at work for this, and they are working on something called the Graph Analytics Processor. So for those of you wondering, Puma actually stands for something. It call it's called Programmable Unified Memory Architecture and it is designed for small irregular memory accesses across a global unified memory space. So what does this actually mean in terms of practical applications? Well, it actually skips a lot of the assumptions that a modern CPU or GPU will make as the article itself explains. It doesn't assume that it has all the memory nearby, it does not assume that memory access will repeat itself in the near future, and it also doesn't assume that memory access to a specific address that means nearby memory addresses will go unaccessed. Now, I do have a bit of a statement here from Intel which reads, quote, by throwing away those basic assumptions, you build an entirely different hardware architecture around small accesses to globally unified data. And then at every stage, every time there is a wire interconnect or anything connecting one compute unit to some other data unit or other compute unit, every single point is optimized for latency. Now, while the wiki chip listing is rather lengthy and I'm only going to go over the cliff notes as it were, again, you will find the full thing linked below, you will see that Intel have also provided some performance figures based on internal stimulations from the company. And they also went on to say, quote, the node scaling is really the critical problem. When we talk about trillions of edges, we know those numbers are going to get bigger. And as you can see, it claims to have beyond 80% scaling efficiency. Now, as you will find detailed in the article, they are obviously working on software to go alongside this hardware. The software support is very, very important. I'm not going to go into that in this video. It's kind of beyond the remits of what I wanted to discuss, but just wanted to bring it to the table that Intel are indeed working on this brand new architecture that sounds rather interesting. Will we see at least parts of this architecture brought into play in the future? Very well, possibly, yes, of course. What they decide to bring to certain market segments is very much down to Intel. This could be something they keep to like the data center level, or it could end up in sort of higher end of their consumer level chips. We just don't know. But still interesting to see, even if it never makes it to the consumer level chip, still very cool to see. I love seeing these new technologies. I've always said this stuff is what makes technology so interesting. 
But speaking of interesting things in production, we have some very cool news from Samsung. So, you may recall back in October of last year, we saw a report from Samsung Foundry which basically said that they were going to be using their 7nm Low Power Plus or 7LPP fabrication and they have not slowed down even for a second since then. They are now on track to start mass production using its refined 6LPP, as you might guess that stands for 6nm Low Power Plus Tech, in the second half of this year and it goes even further as they said they're going to begin beginning tape out the first 5 LPE 5nm low power early SOCs and would also complete development for 4nm low power early process in the coming months as well so they are basically four steps ahead of themselves now Samsung have said multiple times that they are going to be using extreme ultraviolet lithography or EUVL still get tongue tied every time I have to say that and it is going to be key in several next generation fabrication processes. The first tech to use it is the 7LPP, which I've already said, and we're going to see it using it being used, excuse me, to more extensive degrees in the further technology. So for example, the 6LPP and of course the 5 and 4 that I've just discussed. Just kind of give you a bit of a TLDR of the performance increases we can expect for 6LL 6LPP, excuse me, we can see 10% higher transistor density, lower power. Now we don't know specifics when it comes to the improvements for 5LPE and of course 6LPP but we can expect to see those power performance and transistor density improvements that we're seeing across the board for these um, other NMs as well. As for the final one on the list which of course is the 4LPE and 4LPP of course in the future they are going to complete development in the second half of this year, so we can basically expect it to tape out early next year and volume production at some point in 2021. So basically, Samsung are not even stopping to catch their breath, and given how competitive TSMC have been in this area, for instance, they are very right to uh, be aggressive in this area. So let's finish things up today, shall we, with a little bit of gaming news with one of my favourite franchises, Resident Evil. So, we all know that Resident Evil 2 Remake was very well received, and deservedly so. It looked good pretty much from the outset, and of course it finally released, and it was awesome. I loved it. I mean, Resident Evil 2 is one of my favourite Resident Evils, so I had high expectations, and I was also just like, please Capcom, don't ruin one of my favourite Resident Evils, just please. But no, it, it was amazing, and the amount of love that was put into that game just shone through every single part of it. And obviously, it was insanely successful for Capcom, and as was Resident Evil 7 as well. So, it should come as no surprise, as I discuss in an article linked in the description below this video, that they are indeed working on a new Resident Evil game. So, essentially what's happened is Capcom Division 1, which is the part of Capcom that's responsible for both Resident Evil and Devil May Cry as well, has sent emails out to Resident Evil ambassadors in Japan, inviting them to test the game. This was published by the fan site Biohaze, so thanks to them. And essentially, all it says is that we're, you know, if you're interested in testing out the game, click the button. It, it gives basically no information. So... One thing that it does say, however, is that they pre would prefer ambassadors with a previous experience in the franchise. And obviously, if you are a Resident Evil ambassador, you probably do have that anyway. But it just raises an interesting question. Is this going to be Resident Evil 8? Or, it's going or is it going to be Resident Evil 3 Remake? Now, obviously, Capcom have said multiple times that if Resident Evil 2 did well enough, they would make Resident Evil 3 Remake at some point. But... As much as I would love for it to be Resident Evil 3 Remake, I think it's much more likely to be Resident Evil 3 just in terms of time. Because obviously, yes, Capcom probably are planning on doing Resident Evil 3 Remake, given how Resident Evil 2 has been printing money for them. But would it be at a state where they're ready for it to be tested? Probably not. It's probably still in the pre-production phase, if, it is, if, if they've even begun it at all. Just because they're going to be working on it doesn't mean they have time to do it right now. So, it's more likely to be the Resident Evil 8. There's been rumours since last year that we're going to be seeing, or it is in development, should I say. It could, of course, be another game that they're remaking, like, say, I don't know, Code Veronica, just to throw one out there, for instance. I actually wouldn't mind a Code Veronica remake. That would actually be pretty cool. And would actually kind of tie into Resident Evil 2. Now I think about it. Yeah. yeah that would work. Anyway, so... 
what would you like to, like to see, guys? I mean, I would be happy with any of them. Resident Evil 8, if it continues in the vein of Resident Evil 7, great, sign me up. Resident Evil 3, remake, yes, please. Code Veronica or something else, cool. You know, Resident Evil has been saved from itself. You know, Resident Evil 6, bleh, the less said about that, the better. You know, Resident Evil 5 was okay. Resident Evil 4 was a bit controversial, I know, but it's one of my personal favourites. It was the start of the path, you know, journey down Action Land path, but it is still a great game. And of course, Resident Evil 3, 2, and 1, all classics, and Code Veronica as well. So, let me know your opinions, guys. What Resident Evil game would you like to see next? My pose to you is these three options. Resident Evil 8, Resident Evil 3 Remake, or Code Veronica. But if you have another suggestion, hit me up. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching and for bearing with me through my slightly befuddled state. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.